Banda Aceh is at the northernmost point of the Indonesian island of Sumatra. The province of Aceh is 55,000 square kilometers, about twice as large as Belgium, with 4 million people. Even before the tsunami on December 26 last year, there was a state of emergency here. For 30 years, the Free Aceh Movement, the GAM, had been waging an insurgency which was fiercely opposed by the Indonesian army. The tsunami did at least have the effect of opening up the area to the outside world, and the EU quickly became by far the most generous donor in reconstruction of tsunami-affected areas. Alongside aid, the European Union is also strongly committed to the process of re-establishing peace in the region. It sent 230 monitors to Aceh. Their job, to verify the implementation of measures mapped out in the peace agreement obtained in August 2005 by the former Finnish president, Marti Atisari. Everyone knows the monitors here. They're known by the acronym for their mission, the AMM, the Ace Monitoring Mission. It's impossible to miss them in their white uniforms, a color to emphasize the entirely civil nature of their mission. Today, one of the teams is going to the Mulebo region on the south coast of the island. They're supervising the handing over of weapons by GAM rebels as laid down in the peace agreement. What we are doing really is to uh, uh, get in contact with the, the GAM personnel and decide on an area where we should collect the weapons. We have made arrangements with the police and the TNI, which is the military, to safeguard the, the, the GAM personnel so they come in safely into the site. It's a familiar routine by now. The GAM fighters hand in their arms in the presence of their commander-in-chief, a representative of the political branch of the movement, as well as someone from the government and the Indonesian army. Accepted. If all the parties accept that it's in working order, the weapon is catalogued, then broken up and given to the army. One idea circulating is to build a peace monument out of the weapons in the center of Aceh. In return for this disarmament, the government is committed to withdrawing a certain number of troops and police from the Aceh province. In this way, there are no winners, no losers. The European monitors hope to preserve this delicate balance and restore trust between the parties. I have seen the climate. I, I saw in the very beginning very uh, much, much uh, frustrated people staring at each other and now they are smiling and choking. So uh, this uh, process has been building up the confidence between the parties and uh, I'm convinced that they at least they want to get rid of the arms in this area. The AMM was deployed by the European Union mainly at the request of the warring parties themselves looking for an impartial arbitrator. I hope with the presence of EU and uh, uh, with its hand AMM now here, uh, the peace process will serve, survive, will be running smoothly. We don't have any problem with, uh, with the GAM soldier here. They all accept it, although they were a little sad at the beginning. So after explanations, they all accept it. And we don't have any problem at all with them. The event always attracts a big crowd, visibly relieved to see the end of hostilities, particularly after having been devastated by the tsunami. All the people here are very happy that peace has come. I'm happy, everyone's happy. It's good to be able to move around where we want to without any problems. The tsunami changed the attitude of, of people in, in arts and they started to think in a different way. Maybe they, they thought what has uh, actually gained within 30 years of war and, uh, and decided that now it's time to try to do something else. This is the headquarters of the AMM back in Aceh. The day's tally, several dozen weapons have been destroyed. After Bosnia, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Georgia or the Congo, yet another peace mission launched by the European Union within the framework of its security and defense policy. But this is the first time it's been done in this part of the world, and so far from Europe. Despite the difficult conditions for the head of the mission, one of the keys to success has been the speed of the intervention. We started 
the presence there already on the day of the signature of the Helsinki Agreement. So what I'm saying is that there was no um, vacuum uh, in which the parties could again uh, circumvent the commitments they had made or uh, the situation could destabilize. We were there at the right moment in a rapid response uh, uh, deployment and I think that is something we have never done before. Another reason for its success is the fact that the mission has been carried out in collaboration with five countries from ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Their contribution is very much that they are of course more uh, acquainted with the local culture, the local situation, local language. So they, they are, we are helping each other in this and this makes that the uh, partnership is mutually reinforcing. Next day, it's off to Sigli on the northern coast. The monitors are back at work. On today's program, a consultation meeting between the army and the local GAM representatives. But between meetings and the destruction of weapons, the mobile AMM team spend a lot of time meeting local people and local administrations in the more remote villages. At each stop, they listen, explain and explain again the details of the peace agreement, known in their jargon as the MOU or Memorandum of Understanding. The most important thing for us is that they read it and they understand it. Make them uh, comfortable about uh, the situation and, and give them a, a sort of uh, belief in the future that this time it will work, they, they will have the, the peace. Here, the deputy mayor of the village admits his difficulties in responding to all the questions from the people. A poster summarizing the principal points of the memorandum will no doubt be very welcome. Then it's the traditional stop off at the corner cafe where the locals soon join in with the conversation. It's clear that the presence of European monitors has an almost therapeutic quality helping people to put the years of mistrust and suspicion behind them. Especially the last month, they uh, really expressed uh, that uh, there's a big difference from before the MOU and now. So it's our experience that uh, people are believing this will uh, end up in, in the right way. The peace agreement satisfies several of the demands of the former separatists including a certain political and economic autonomy in the Aceh province. But more immediate than that is a chapter concerning respect for human rights and amnesty and the reintegration of rebels and prisoners. Members of the GAM don't like the term reintegration, claiming that the fighters have always been integrated in the population. But even so, these people must now return to normal life. That's the case for this woman who was sent to prison for providing food for GAM rebels. From the prison, yeah, I get the, two million. the monitors visit her to see if her return to the village is going well and to check that she's received the aid agreed in the peace agreements for some 5,000 former rebels and prisoners. It's a way to heal the social wounds following the troubles. Three days later, it's D-Day for a new phase of the retreat of the Indonesian army, the deal agreed by Jakarta in return for the GAM disarmament. The monitors go off to see for themselves the reality of this commitment. And as is so often with the army, it all begins with a parade. Today's ceremony is at Kuenguku on the north coast. 2,000 men from the land force, their packs on their backs, are moving out. Before the end of the year, 25,000 soldiers will have left the Aceh territory to bring back the military presence to normal levels. In other words, just under 15,000 men. Until then, all troop movements are forbidden without previous notification to the European monitors. The police must also reduce its numbers by around 5,000 officers. It would appear that everybody's happy with the outcome of the conflict. Apart from an exchange of fire between a former GAM member and soldiers during a weapons handover in October, no serious incident has upset the process. 
a sign of how much each side wants to achieve a lasting peace in Aceh. But this is not quite the final picture. Now, what we need to do is to make sure that the parties are comfortable with our departure on the 15th of March and that the political process continues uh, in Indonesia. That is, that there will be changes in the legislation, new laws, and that uh, real content is given to the concept of autonomy that was promised to the uh, rebel movement uh, in Helsinki. Battered and bruised by 30 years of conflict and by an unprecedented natural disaster, Aceh is now in convalescence. It'll take several years to get back to normal life, but at least the process has begun. A process the EU is part of, supporting the recovery from the tsunami and the peace process here.